Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk a little bit more about the WD Red series of NAS SSD. That's right, WD are now getting involved in the world of NAS based SSD. This isn't their first foray into the world of solid state drives and of course they have been covering a number of their more popular color brands such as WD Red, Green and Black into the field of not just hard drives but SSD as well. But this is their very first formal entry into the world of NAS based SSD with a WD Red SA500. This series of drives are going to be available in 500 gig, 1 TB, 2 TB and, two, and 4 terabytes of storage and this is in SATA based 2.5 inch form factor media. There will also be a range of M2 based SSDs arriving at 500 gig, 1 TB and 2 TB. The price is scaling effectively alongside them with the cheapest arriving at around £80 give or take the VAT and your local Local area and where you buy it from of course all the way up to about 650 quid for that 4 TB drive so that's a hell of a lot of money so why should you care about NAS based SSD well there's a few reasons notwithstanding the fact that these drives are going to arrive with five years of manufacturer's warranty which let's face it most brands have already but on top of that when it comes to SSDs what you want is an SSD or indeed any media that is fit for the purpose you're using it for. A lot of people when I've talked about NAS based hard drives in the past have argued on either side of the fence. You have one side that goes it's all a marketing trick, it's all a con, they're all the same hard drives made in the same place all for different prices, the whole thing's a con. And then you have the other side of the fence which by the way I happen to live on which states that you need a tool that is designed for the job. And once you look at traditional hard drives and put them alongside NAS-based hard drives, you realize straight away that the architecture of these drives, not only the physical build and the controller on the chip, but the output of these drives is very, very different. Because the way NASs are accessed are very, very different. When you have a NAS, it can be on for days, weeks, months, or even years at a time. And traditional hard drives are not designed to be worked in that fashion. They are designed to be booted up, run, and then powered down or put into idle for long sessions at a time with huge cool per um, huge periods of no power being injected into them or complete inactivity. Whereas NASs have sporadic activity. The access of data is completely immeasurable in most cases. And even though you think you're accessing the data at the same time every day, there's loads of other background operations, which mean because the NAS is on for extended periods of time, the read write is all over the shop. And therefore, the controller has to be ready to spin up at a moment's notice on hard drives. Now, the same logic, not the spin up, of course, applies to solid state drives. And with solid state drives being predominantly used in more modern NAS devices with regards to caching, auto tiering, and live editing of media over Thunderbolt NAS and 10GBE, it means that these NASs, or uh, these NASs that have got SSDs inside are going to be accessed in a similar, similarly a sporadic fashion. You might think, I've put some SSDs in a NAS and I'm going to access it and do all my work on it. But remember, the NAS is on all the time. And on top of that, when you use a caching system, the SSDs, the way they're going to be accessed and data being read and written to is going to be fantastically unpredictable. The random read-write of an SSD in caching and auto-tearing is almost impossible to predict because when you access the data, you're going to need to know that it's been moved onto the cache. You need to know that a cached area, a mirror of that data has now been put onto the SSDs. And these are things that traditional SSDs were just not built for. They Don't get me wrong, they have an excellent degree of random access to them, SSDs compared to hard drives, but they've still been designed and those controllers tweaked towards the power up, power down method of access. And now in 2019, with more and more users using flash um, operations for high IOPS and giant arrays of storage from companies like QNAP that produce uh, NAS devices that have got hard drive bays and SSD bays working together to create tiered and cache storage, it's never been a better time for a NAS brand to get involved in this kind of storage. And it's one of the main reasons I believe that WD have gone and released the SA500 series of SSD. Now, of course, they are not the first people to enter this arena. We've already talked about Seagate's own Iron Wolf 110 series of SSD drives. They released those uh, about 
four or five months ago now, and they've already done very, very well in that field. And they've already done a bunch of speed tests comparing the WD series of SSDs versus Samsung SSDs versus the IronWolf series of SSDs to give you guys an idea of how the performance differs with these different SSDs. And I am looking forward to getting my hands on some of these WD Red SSDs to see where they fit in the family. Because as we've noticed so far, the NAS series of drives that we've seen from Seagate fall between the Evo and the Pro from Samsung. That is to say that the way they're geared, the access to kind of NANs they're using, and I believe the WD Red is using VNAND, um, it means that the way the performance you get from it and the integrity, and more precisely, the way it works within the cache and how long and if the data is going to be flushed out at times, will differ. So it will be great not only to do a speed test on these drives when we've got our hands on them, but moreover, compare them against the existing ones out there to see what's good, what's bad, and which is best for you and your NAS data. But this has been a very brief overview of the WD Red um, SA um, SA500 series. If you are interested in learning more about these drives, then do go to the link in the description to Span and NAS Compares. Click like if you enjoyed the video, click subscribe to learn more about this subject, and click the bell to be notified about very more, uh, a lot more interesting data around this and videos for you. Rather than getting all the videos, you can just find out about the ones about WD Red. But I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio.